over 60% of SLA violations can be traced back to poor handling of pending tickets, mainly because of a lack of communication between parties of a support and requesters. <music> Hi, and welcome back to the Tech Leap YouTube channel. There is a myriad of possibilities on using or not using pending status on tickets. The way the support team choose how to use it can make or break relationship between client and provider. And support departments must keep in mind that timely responses are crucial for all kinds of organizations. When the process of defining pending status is left behind or not followed along, these issues can lead to frustration and dissatisfaction, which also impacts the business reputation. So here I have five points to help you on defining clear fair and concise pending status on your process in GLPI. Number one, define clear criteria for pending status. If you want to prevent the misuse of the pending status to delay work or to avoid responsibility, define this criteria very carefully and make it clear to everyone, not just the support team, but also to your requesters. Awaiting client feedback, external vendor actions or parts arrival could all be valid reasons if it is accorded between parties and for sure if your support team is well trained to use those remember that the pending status in glpi makes the resolution date of your ticket to be recalculated after it is updated to other status number two set limits and follow-ups protocols tickets left on pending status for too long may lead to unhappiness and missed deadlines you may use some automations in glpi to make technicians understand and remind that they must reassess all the tickets on a daily basis or on a weekly basis here's a tip you can use notifications on save it searches so you can change your save it searches to your protocols and make it notify your technicians so they can come back to tickets that are on pending status for too long number three document all the actions in your tickets proper documentation within each ticket ensures that any team member can quickly understand the ticket's history and current status reducing delays caused by knowledge gaps for example GLPI AI plugin makes it easier to technicians to assess a summary of actions in a ticket with a vast timeline of acts. Number four, prioritize client communication during escalations. Sometimes a ticket might need to be escalated due to complexity or delays, which can further frustrate your clients. So every time you are setting a ticket to pending, let an explanation why this is being done. You can also use the plugin Escalate to automatically add a follow-up that this ticket was escalated to a different group or a different technician. Tickets that stays for more than three days on pending without any update lead to 25 to 30% of customer unsatisfaction. So they don't come back to your support team. Number five, communicate transparently with your clients. And why not make it automatic? Clients want and need to feel informed about their tickets. They want to understand what they can do, what they need to inform your support team or when this ticket is going to be attended. Don't let your clients feel ignored. Never. Setting up an automatic dunning process may lead to an increase on communication and to make your clients aware of actions that are being done or if they need to add more information to the ticket. With the pending reasons feature in GLPI, you may create an automatic process to communicate with your clients and even solve a ticket without any information after some follow-ups. Let's take a look at it. The pending reasons feature is set up on dropdowns and assistance. You will need follow-up templates, you will need pending reasons, and you'll also need solution templates. All of these are templates and settings you are going to use during your daily basis, and all of your technicians can use it. So in this example, I will show you some follow-ups that I've created before. So on follow-ups templates, if you haven't seen the other video about the tweak variables, you can take a look at it 
and know how to create some follow-ups with some variables from tickets. So let's take a look at this follow-up for delayed response. So in this example, we have a follow-up that we are going to add in a ticket when we are putting this on pen pending status or if we want to add a new follow-up during the process of a life cycle of this ticket. Let's come back to the follow-up templates and here you can see we have three reminders and we have also an insert follow-up, client schedule for action or update on your request. Let's take a look on our pending reasons and I will show them working after. Let's come back to drop downs. Let's see the pending reasons. And here we have two pending reasons created. First one is awaiting the client feedback. The second one is client schedule for action. But before we dive into the pending reasons, let's take also a look on which kind of solutions we have already created. Because as I told you before, we want to solve a ticket if the requester doesn't respond anymore to your ticket. On solution templates, we have the row response solution. You can create more here. But in this case, in this scenario, we have a no response solution. So after three, four follow-ups, we are going to solve this ticket without response. So in this case, I let a message to the user so they understand that the ticket was closed due to lack of information of without response, we have to close the ticket. But they can open this again. So be very, very polite on this solution template. Coming back to our drop downs, we are going to take a look on pending reasons, awaiting client feedback. And as you can see here, we have some fields, which is the name that the technicians are going to see when they are choosing the pending reason they are inserting on GLPI. The automatic follow up frequency is a frequency that the follow ups set up here are going to be sent. How many follow ups are going to be inserted? In this case, three same follow ups are going to be inserted. And after that, the solution template is going to be set, which is the no response solution. I could change it here. If we come back to the ticket, let's take any ticket here like this test one and let's insert an answer here. And as I told you before, this is a good practice to add an explanation why this ticket is going to be set to pending. So let's answer this choose here the for example update on your request or i could for example add here this ticket needs your attention on information regarding xyz and lpto let's imagine i'm asking for some information here and here i will set the status to pending and these three fields are shown to me. I can choose one pending reason that is already created or I could change some fields after it is done. So in this scenario, if I choose the awaiting client feedback, every day an automatic follow-up will be inserted and after three follow-ups, the ticket is going to be solved. The ticket is going to be set to pending and after three follow-ups it is going to be solved does this feature help on your business what are the pending reasons are you going to use on your glpi and if you are here until now consider subscribing and liking this video